Uh, Namaskaram, Sadhguru. Um, could you please uh, elaborate on the number 33? Um, I know it's a very significant uh, number for one um, in one's life. And uh, next month, next Purnami, I'm going to turn 33. And uh, I know I know there's like some special sadhana that is being given uh, in the center for people who are below 33. So I want to know like if I pass this uh, mark, uh, what's the significance in uh, my uh, spiritual path? Oh, we have sadhana for old people also. <laughs> <laughs> nice to hear. Thank you. Well, uh, in the yogic culture, First eight years, or actually eight and a half years, is considered childhood. So these are not counted. Though Balavastha is up to twelve, it's the eight and a half years where you're a real child. You know it from your own experience. After your eight and a half, only your parents thought you were a child, but you are secretly many things. <laughs> yes. Adults think that you are a child, but you know you are not one. Because your childhood in many ways ends at eight and a half. So if you take two si solar cycles, which is uh, twenty-four years or little less than that, and add eight and a half years to it, it will become thirty-two and three-fourths or something like this. Thirty-two years and seven months are somewhere there, the exact calculations we can make, but it's nearly thirty-three years. So when these two cycles end, plus the Balavastha leaving that when it ends, it is a possibility. This is a time when your life could take on a different level of propulsion. If you have prepared yourself well, either with education or some skill or yoga or inner dimensions of your life, if you have prepared yourself on any of these things, that is the time when it can propel or that is the time when it can start crashing. You know, in the Western societies, they talk about midlife crisis. It usually starts around thirty-three, thirty-four years of age. Suddenly people don't know what to do with themselves, life getting meaningless. Or those who are successful, they find traction and suddenly they explode into different levels of success or well-being. All this can happen because within the system it has completed a certain cycle, either it can take off or it can crash. So sadhana for before thirty-three years of age is one kind that is more preparatory in nature so that when that moment comes, they will be able to make it into a positive time in their life because how positive it becomes at the age of thirty-two to thirty-three years of age, this will largely determine the trajectory of one's life and impact in the entire life, your entire life will be largely the trajectory of that will be decided at that. If life doesn't really take off at that level, then you may do well, but you will never fly. You will, you know, uphill task. Not that you can never fly, that's a wrong thing to say, but difficult. You need more fuel to fly. You will need lot more fuel to fly, but if you brought your life your physiological structures, your energy structures, your internal geometry, if you brought it to a certain level of maturity by the time you're thirty-three, then life takes off much more effortlessly, otherwise it will need much more effort. This is why we set up sadhana for below thirty-three years of age, so that they prepare, they organize their internal geometry, they organize their energies, they conserve themselves in such a way, when life wants to burst forth, you have the necessary fuel to do it. See, 
You want to throttle up now and fire up really big, but your tank is empty. That's going to be trouble. It doesn't matter how much possibilities are there, your tank is empty, now this is not going to fly. Everything else may be great, you may have education, you may have knowledge, but still you won't fly easily because of this. If you miss this, thirty-three years of age, those of you who are looking depressed, Sadhguru, I'm thirty-five, what to do? Well, if you are uh, a male person, forty-two is another time when there is another upsurge, not at the same level as thirty-three, but definitely a substantial upsurge where one can again burst forth. If you're a female, it may be forty-six for you, but because if you do not handle your biology well, forty-six may become more troublesome than possibilities. But there are many possibilities. When a woman reaches forty-six years of age, she can break through her limitations of whatever the feminine nature held her down with certain aspects of life, all that she can break through in a big way because our energies are transforming naturally. I'm talking about natural support, I'm not talking about what individual people may do. Individual people may defy all this and go on, that's different. But naturally, this is the way it is moving. So if you miss both these, when you hit sixty, so there's hope, huh? <laughs> when you hit sixty, in many ways your fundamental structure within the system is changing. You are not much of a man or not much of a woman unless you are in your head. If you're too much in your head, it will be otherwise in body. You're neither not too much of a man nor too much of a woman. This gives you a new possibility. A whole lot of people burst forth at this time, but by then lot of people are sick, they are… Uh, they got various problems and uh, they're ca carrying baskets of karma on their head. Because of this, by sixty, their back may be bent and they're defeated and their visits are only to medical spaces, you know, not to sacred spaces, but to doctors and psychiatrists and stuff like this. If you've gone there, you will miss that bus also. But sixty is a tremendous possibility. This is why in the… in this culture, if you… at the age of sixty, there are various rituals to do. If you're a married person, when you become sixty, you get married once again so that it becomes a new possibility, that it is not a trap, it is not a bondage, it is becomes a possibility. That is the idea of uh, sixty years of, uh, you know, when people become sixty, they get married once again to the same person. I'm… I'm <laughs> you have to specify this today <laughs> Today you have to specify this, <laughs> otherwise it was always understood that way <laughs> So you marry the same person once again because when you married at twenty or twenty-five or whatever age, body was dominant. At sixty, your consciousness could be dominant and there are new possibilities. So whether married people go through this kind of things, others go through other kinds of rituals and many people start their yogic sadhana only at sixty, but for all this, you must at least keep yourself in a reasonable shape and form. If you're trying to imitate Mother Earth or you, you become sick in various ways, then that possibility will not be available. So if you're below thirty-three, best to hit the thirty-three. Before thirty-three, you have energized yourself you organized your geometry in such a way that you are never the impediment in your life. You are not the issue. This one thing you must do, there are a thousand issues in the world, but you are not the issue. This much you do, then you don't worry about these times. You are thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, you can fire up any time. I'm sorry, should I say all the numbers? No, you can fire up any time, but in terms of preparation, up to thirty-three, thirty-two years and seven months, 
to be reasonably precise. If you done enough preparation in reorganizing your geometry, your energetic processes, your thoughts, your emotions, if you settle these things, then life will open up like a burst. So we are trying to do this with our Sanskriti children. Everybody is wondering what will they do, what will they do, where will they get a job, they, how will they go to McKinsey, how will they go somewhere else. They will not go to those places, but uh, they will go to better places because <laughs> the way they are organizing their energies, the way they are organizing their geometry, if uh, because we have to release them by the time they're eighteen, twenty, they've completed this. If uh, as soon as they go home, if the parents don't mess them up, I hope they won't do it because they had the wisdom and the courage to put their children in Sanskriti. But uh, they become overly concerned. Now you're twenty and you don't have a certificate, what will you do? As I've spoken in recent times, this is only now in the last sixty to seventy years that you have to stick a certificate in your face and go and that stupid certificate opens doors for you. Otherwise, never in the history of humanity a certificate opened a door. It is only you, your competence which opened the door. Once again, world is moving that way. A whole lot of business enterprises are no more asking for your qualification they're just asking what can you do or what have you done till now. And that is where it will go. If you invest enough time in organizing your system till you're thirty-three years of age, well, when that moment comes, possibilities open up naturally and many things are possible. You should not also exhaust yourself too early, this is important. Right now, uh, especially in United States, uh, people come and tell me, my boy is eleven years old, he's already the CEO of this company. I said, why? You already thrown your child in the marketplace. And fortunately, as you become adults somewhere, at least you have to keep one hand in the marketplace because the whole world has become economics. But you threw eleven-year-old child, that means at eleven if he became CEO, probably he started at six. A uh, six-year-old child, you threw him into the marketplace, this is the worst thing you can do. You do all this nonsense. Please leave your children out for some time. Let them grow their body, their brain, their sense of perception and their geometry, you must understand this is very important. In the physical world, if something significant has to happen, the geometric equanimity and the geometric smoothness of existence is needed. If that is not there, well, you can do many things but all that you will do is friction and suffering. If there is no geometric equanimity, if you look at any mechanical object, any machine, you will see if there is no geometric equanimity, all that will happen is friction. You must understand physical world, whether it is the galaxy, or the solar system or this body, these are all mechanical functions. It all depends on geometry. How smooth the geometry is, that is how smoothly it will function. Otherwise, it will become frictious. When it's frictious, the faster you go, the more you will suffer. This is happening. Successful people on the planet who are trying to be on the fast lane of life are suffering lot more than those who have failed in their lives. Though if you fail in your life, well, you can walk on the beach and enjoy yourself because <laughs> you have the time. This is a beautiful thing about failure, you have time <laughs> Hey, what is this guy <laughs> I didn't know there were so many of you <laughs> Success, the problem with success is, when you're successful, there's no time for anything. So you have to become super alert if you want to still imbibe life and know the taste of life every moment of your life. Otherwise, you will become a, a zombie walking around 
with something buzzing in your head which is not life. 